Show. show. Say hello to my co-host staffers, my studio audience. Virtual audience at home. Who you doing? <laughs> Tiffany Trump is engaged. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. this fascinating. I mean, it's a big day in our country. In just a few hours, uh, the new president, Joe Biden, will become the 46th president of the United States. But, 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 let's talk our talk. Yes. Tiffany Trump is engaged to a 23-year-old billionaire. A billion, he's 23, she's 27. Mm -hmm. You know, they announced it yesterday and, and they posed at the White House. His name is Michael Boulis. And he's the heir of something. He's from Nigeria. He's Nigerian. Nigerian billionaire. What? <laughs> yes. Uh. Lebanese and French descent, but from Nigeria. From Nigeria. A Nigerian billionaire. So this will be his. Third wife. Nah. -uh. Who? I don't this know. Is, no, this kid, this is first marriage. No, but you know, I know Nigerian men who have several oh. wives. Ah. LOL. LOL. <laughs> anyway, he now lives in London. They met back in 2018. You know what? I've always liked Tiffany Trump and I've always liked Marla Maples. I'll tell you why. Marla did know that he was married but he told Marla that they were separated and living separate lives. And he also would talk very badly about his ex, um, Ivana, in front of other people and say, this is the real beauty. I saw the interview where, um, I think it was Leslie Stahl did the interview. I know I wasn't the only one who saw it. And, she, and this is way back in the day, they were flying on a private plane and, and she was interviewing Donald Trump and at the end of the flight, when the plane landed, out of this room that nobody thought was a room, it looked like a wall, comes this beautiful young woman who ended up being Marla Maples, flying the whole way. She was like, we were on the plane for 17 hours. This woman never appeared. Donald interviewed and then would disappear, but we just assumed, okay, it's his plane. I've always, you, you know what I mean? I like Marla Maples, and I wish T Tiffany well. I do think that she will, I, I think that her generation will give her a bigger break than her older half-sister, who, um, you know, like if Tiff came out with a line at one of our cheap and cheerful stores, $23 leggings, you know, face masks and hats and things like that, and she's just Tiffany Trump. I, she's, anyway, good luck, but back to the inauguration. Um, Lady Gaga is going to sing the national anthem. And Jennifer Lopez and Garth Brooks will perform. And I was asked in our meeting, well, uh, why them? And I said, because Modern people need modern things. And I would say you're modern, and, and my, my, my spectrum of modern is very big. A cool 75-year-old all the way down to a very enlightened eight-year-old. They all know Jennifer Lopez. And 
the 50 year old will explain who Garth Brooks is. And then Garth is easy on the eyes. You know, we, we love his marriage and the whole bit. She cooks, he eats, and they have a good time. <laughs> and who else is performing? Um, oh, Lady Gaga yeah. and the anthem? Please, ageless, timeless. Yeah. It, it, I think those are perfect picks. Um, it's not like we'd wanna see Susan Boyle, even, even though she's in that age group, but you know, we don't wanna hear her type of music for that. And there is no inaugural ball tonight. Instead, they're doing a Celebrating America special. Well, we've told you about this, I think. You know about it. Tom Hanks is hosting it. And then John Legend is performing. Hopefully, um, Chrissy will come out to break things up and make us laugh. You know, in something plunging yeah. and high. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and the baby crawling all around, the babies. Um, then uh, Demi Lovato is gonna sing her song that you all said she's selfish for making it a moment about her when she said she was writing a song, huh? I'm you know, I'm you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, she wrote that song for the purpose of this. She was invited by Justin to perform along. And people like Demi Lovato. And she's better... Oh, wait, Bruce Springsteen is performing too? Bruce Springsteen is wow. performing. Wow. All right, Bruce Springsteen is performing too. All right, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I, I like Bruce Springsteen. I just think there's overkill. You know, like he's on all the time. And okay, okay. Okay, Jersey, Jersey. Uh, and then Justin Timberlake is performing. Yeah, I won't, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be there for Jennifer Lopez earlier and for Garth because, only because, you know, I know Trisha and Garth has passed through, so I feel like I'm family friend. And I like to see him perform. I don't know all the music, but I hum along and, you know, pass through, put another load in the washing machine and come back. <laughs> you, you know, you make busy. Um, and, and Gaga, I'll be there for Stephanie, definitely. Um, but um, this whole Celebrate America, it's gonna be on every single channel from 8.30 on the East Coast time to what, 10 o'clock at night? Probably like 10 o'clock, yep. Maybe I'll drink warm milk. They say that makes you go to sleep. Warm milk and a half of a... Um, like a, uh, yeah, melatonin. Met a half uh, of a yep. melatonin. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Yup. Welcome to Sub Flip 4 with the Galaxy Trade-In. Any year, any condition. And wake up in time for something good on TV. Anyway, Jay-Z is being accused of being too possessive of Beyonce. Oh. <laughs> is that an O oh and a wow? I mean, okay, there's um, somebody that you might not know, but his name is Sean Paul. Uh, give me the light and pass the yeah. drove. <laughs> <laughs> and so, he wasn't just talking about Jay-Z being possessive. He was asked in an interview, but the whole interview was done in Patois, and it was too difficult to translate because I can barely speak English. So I'll just, I'll just give you the gist of the interview. Um, they made the song Baby Boy together uh, back in 2003. Baby Boy, you're on my mind. But he also did Give Me the Light and Pass the Drow. Yeah, he's made a lot of songs. I'm oh, Wendy from radio. Uh -huh. I know. Yeah. As a matter of fact, give me one of them Sean Paul. I'm gonna do a whole hit, set. Hit five of them. Give me a Sean Paul set. Happy DJ Day. Yes, yes. Today is National DJ Day. And I, and I would like to give some love to DJ Red Alert, DJ Chuck Chill Out, DJ Marley Ma, yeah. DJ Coco Chanel, DJ Jazzy Joyce, DJ Spinderella, and the movie coming up this weekend. Yeah. Without the DJs, there are no MCs, because anybody can MC, a lot of people would say. But with a good DJ, 
Okay. Anyway, back to Sean Paul. So I told you Patois. Uh, so he said that Jay-Z kept him from filming in the video with Beyonce. And they were only allowed to perform the song once. Like Jay was like on the phone, all right, what's going on on the set? And so he was told, well, you know, this one's here, that one's here, the lighting is great, your girl looks beautiful, and who else is there? What, what else is all going on? Okay, well, they got one shot to do it, do that one shot, and that's it. It wasn't Sean Paul being a big mouth, it was Sean Paul being asked a question, do you understand? And listen, if I were Jay, based on the stories I've heard about Beyonce um, in the earlier year, there's somebody in the room who I will not look at who knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, and then, you know, anyway. And then there's this rapper, Bun B. Bun is hot, he's got a hot wife. There's Bun B, right? Bun B had, Jay-Z Jay had Bun B kicked off the set of the movie, of, excuse me, of the video for Check On It. No, check on it, check on me tonight. <laughs> you know what? Throw that in and we'll call it, we'll call it the Jay is pissed off mix. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Anywho, so Jay-Z calls up and he's like, okay, who's on the set? Bun B. Okay, and who else? Well, the lights, your girl looks beautiful, Bun is here, we're ready to go. I mean, we're ready to go. He said, everybody off the set. That's it. Mind you, Bun B is married and was married then and his wife was right there on the set. Like, Bun is cheating with Beyonce with, with the wife right there. I mean, there is such a thing, though, of a man cheating on a woman right under her nose. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, um, what else are we talking about? <laughs> you know, we talk about kids a lot, and I always say eight is a perfect age for teaching them things that they can, that they can remember for the rest of their lives. You know, that's about that age when they really start to hold on. They, I mean, they let go of a lot of it. But eight is that age. You know, when you tell them stuff at three, they don't necessarily remember, and they're not life's lessons. Like, you're calling it a wee-wee at three. By eight, you're, you know, you're telling them more, a little bit more. And by eight, they should be allowed to touch that microwave and, and, and throw a little hot pocket in there or something like that and, and understand that it goes in there for a minute and 30 seconds or whatever, whatever. It's been a while since I've had that situation, but you know, you know, don't touch the stove, not yet. But by eight, so here goes Angela Bassett, who you know we love. Angela Bassett, who's married to Courtney B. Vance, they both went to the Yale School of Drama. Beautiful, talented couple. They wanted children, they got the surrogate, they got 14-year-old, a son. They got twins, as a matter of fact. They have a girl and a boy. But sometimes boys are a little slow to learn, as we've learned. Anyway, um, she is teaching her 14-year-old son how to cook and clean. And I think that's wonderful. I think these days, eight, you should be able to know how to cook and clean because you start with um, one of those Roombas that you get on Trendy at Wendy, you see? You get the Roomba going or else, or else you start with a lint roller and you know, over the carpet. You don't vacuum yet, you know, but you do something. You at least start to separate the dark clothes from the light clothes and bring them to the washing machine. I believe in giving kids chores and I, you know, I don't believe in giving them money for the chores. I do believe in giving them rewards, which are different. Like for instance, um, you can watch TV for two more hours on Saturday. 
so now you can stay up until midnight or something. Or, um, I don't know, I'll make your favorite cake. Or, I'm gonna put this money in your college fund, but I'm gonna let you do all the talking when we get to the bank. I'm gonna lift you up and you're gonna do all the talk. Yeah, oh, kids like that. They learn about money, and you know that jar that you take to the bank and all the money spills out? They love that stuff. I also believe in spankings. Mm -hmm. Yup. So speaking of children um, and lessons, let's talk spellings. I rolled my eyes too. <laughs> but a good team, the Bureau, they sold this on me. So now I gotta sell it to you. Tory Spelling's brother, Randy, said he probably would be dead if he hadn't left Hollywood. Well, this is Randy today. Randy is 42 years old, and he said that after his father, the legendary Aaron Spelling, who was worth $600 million back in 2006, I would have thought it would be billion, just because we're so spoiled to billion, and now even trillion, but anyway, $600 million he was worth. He, he left um, Tory the infamous $800,000. And we never knew what he left Randy. He left Randy $800,000. What do you mean that's nice? When you're, I mean, that's, that's nice for us, okay? Because our dads, you know, they, they want us to leave them something. But, but, no, that is not nice. I don't know what his mindset was. I know he was busy juggling all those shows, probably on the set all the time. I'm sure Candy was shopping all the time and wrapping gifts and being a socialite. Their house was the biggest home in the United States, remember at one point? Yeah, a spelling manner. It was a big deal when this was built. But you know, when you have kids like that, you wonder how much time do the parents really spend with the kids and are the kids just like a necklace, a another accessory to what the American dream is. Did Aaron ever really love his children the way we love our children? Is Candy really capable of loving two children the way we love our children? Do you notice my soap opera inflection? I love it, it's very Alexis Colby. Uh -huh. <laughs> well. <laughs> But you wonder that, you know? Randy ended up turning to drugs after his father passed away because he felt the pressure from all of us to follow in the footsteps, you know? Because we're sexist, so we looked at Tori like, okay, Tori's gonna continue shopping and be cutesy-wootsy, and, and Randy, the guy, is gonna move in and, and continue on with Love Boat and Charlie's Angels and all those great shows. But instead, he turned to drugs and the parents probably never even noticed it. Housekeepers and all that stuff, no one probably noticed. Well, he ended up dropping Hollywood, moving to Oregon, getting married. He has two kids, his wife birthed two kids. He became a life coach. <laughs> and my question to you is, do you take life coaching from somebody who grew up, uh, no, 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 you have to look at both sides. I don't know what you right. think you're watching. <laughs> this is the Wendy show. Right. I don't think I could be life coached by somebody who grew up at, at uh, Spelling Manor and who was only left with 800,000 wang wang dollars. What do you know about life? You know, you turn to drugs and then, okay, good for you. You got clean, no word on how he got clean, whether he went to rehab or whether he got clean on his own. But the point is, is that he's clean, he's healthy. I don't know what he eats, but he eats all good stuff, I'm sure, to keep him looking fit. And that's fantastic. But I prefer my life coach to be a little bit more 
like me and then successful. Uh-huh. You know, somebody who, whose dad dug ditches mm-hmm. and then they dug ditches and then they bought the company that they both worked for and then they worked their way. You know what, you know what I mean. Yeah. Anyway, b- but good for him. And, and I can't believe Hot Topics is over. <laughs> now, wait a minute. All right. Why so fast? In conclusion, congratulations to Tiffany Trump. And we've got more great show for you, everybody.